Persian literature Persian, adbiyat farsi, adbiyat i farsi, comprises oral compositions and written texts in the Persian language and it is one of the world's oldest literatures. It spans over two and a half millennia. Its sources have been within Greater Iran, including present day Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, the Caucasus, and Turkey, regions of Central Asia such as Tajikistan, and South Asia, where the Persian language has historically been either the native or official language. For instance, Rumi, one of best loved Persian poets born in Balkh in what is now the modern day Afghanistan or Vash in what is now the modern day Tajikistan, wrote in Persian and lived in Konya, then the capital of the Seljuks in Anatolia. The Ghaznavids conquered large territories in Central and South Asia and adopted Persian as their court language. There is thus Persian literature from Iran, Mesopotamia, Azerbaijan, the wider Caucasus, Turkey, western parts of Pakistan, India, Tajikistan and other parts of Central Asia. Not all Persian literature is written in Persian, as some consider works written by ethnic Persians in other languages, such as Greek and Arabic, to be included. At the same time, not all literature written in Persian is written by ethnic Persians or Iranians, as Turkic, Caucasian, and Indic poets and writers have also used the Persian language in the environment of Persianate cultures. Described as one of the great literatures of humanity, including Goethe's assessment of it as one of the four main bodies of world literature, Persian literature has its roots in surviving works of Middle Persian and Old Persian, the latter of which date back as far as 522 BCE, the date of the earliest surviving Achaemenid inscription, the Behistun inscription. The bulk of surviving Persian literature, however, comes from the times following the Arab conquest of Persia c. 650 CE. After the Abbasids came to power 750 CE, the Iranians became the scribes and bureaucrats of the Arab Empire and, increasingly, also its writers and poets. The new Persian language literature arose and flourished in Khorasan and Transoxiana because of political reasons, early Iranian dynasties such as the Tahirids and Samanids being based in Khorasan, Persian poets such as Ferdowsi, Sadi, Hafiz, Attar, Nizami, Rumi and Omar Khayyam are also known in the West and have influenced the literature of many countries. Topic. Classical Persian literature Pre-Islamic Persian literature Very few literary works of Achaemenid Iran have survived, due partly to the destruction of the library at Persepolis. Most of what remains consists of the royal inscriptions of Achaemenid kings, particularly Darius I and his son Xerxes. Many Zoroastrian writings were destroyed in the Islamic conquest of Iran in the 7th century. The Parsis who fled to India, however, took with them some of the books of the Zoroastrian canon, including some of the Avesta and ancient commentaries Zend thereof. Some works of Sassanid geography and travel also survived, albeit in Arabic translations. No single text devoted to literary criticism has survived from pre-Islamic Iran. However, some essays in Pahlavi, such as A and E name Nebishtan, Principles of Writing Book, and Bab e Edtedai. Kalilei o Demne, have been considered as literary criticism Zerinkub, 1959. Some researchers have quoted the Shoubiyye as asserting that the pre-Islamic Iranians had books on eloquence, such as Carvin. No trace remains of such books. There are some indications that some among the Persian elite were familiar with Greek rhetoric and literary criticism Zerinkub, 1947. Topic. Persian literature of the medieval and pre-modern periods While initially overshadowed by Arabic during the Umayyad and early Abbasid caliphates, New Persian soon became a literary language again of the Central Asian and West Asian lands. The rebirth of the language in its new form is often accredited to Ferdowsi, Unsuri, Dachichi, Rudaki, and their generation, as they used pre-Islamic nationalism as a conduit to revive the language and customs of ancient Iran. Topic. Poetry So strong is the Persian inclination to versifying everyday expressions that one can encounter poetry in almost every classical work, whether from Persian literature, science, or metaphysics. In short, the ability to write in verse form was a prerequisite for any scholar. For example, almost half of Avicenna's medical writings are in verse. 
Works of the early era of Persian poetry are characterized by strong court patronage, an extravagance of panegyrics, and what is known as espik fakir, exalted in style. The tradition of royal patronage began perhaps under the Sassanid era and carried over through the Abbasid and Samanid courts into every major Iranian dynasty. The Qasida was perhaps the most famous form of panegyric used, though quatrains such as those in Omar Khayyam's Rubayyat are also widely popular. Khorasani style, whose followers mostly were associated with Greater Khorasan, is characterized by its supercilious diction, dignified tone, and relatively literate language. The chief representatives of this lyricism are Asjadi, Faruqi Sistani, Unsuri, and Manacheri. Panegyric masters such as Rudaki were known for their love of nature, their verse abounding with evocative descriptions. Through these courts and system of patronage emerged the epic style of poetry, with Ferdowsi's Shahnama at the apex. By glorifying the Iranian historical past in heroic and elevated verses, he and other notables such as Dachichi and Asadi Tusi presented the Ajum with a source of pride and inspiration that has helped preserve a sense of identity for the Iranian people over the ages. Ferdowsi set a model to be followed by a host of other poets later on. The 13th century marks the ascendancy of lyric poetry with the consequent development of the Ghazal into a major verse form, as well as the rise of mystical and Sufi poetry. This style is often called Araki Iraqi style. Western provinces of Iran were known as the Persian Iraq A -R -A -Q -E and is known by its emotional lyric qualities, rich meters, and the relative simplicity of its language. Emotional romantic poetry was not something new however, as works such as Vis o Ramin by Asad Gorgani, and Yusuf o Zolaika by Amok Bokharai exemplify. Poets such as Sanai and Attar, who ostensibly have inspired Rumi, Kakani Shirvani, Anvari, and Nizami, were highly respected Ghazal writers. However, the elite of this school are Rumi, Sadi, and Hafiz Shirazi. Regarding the tradition of Persian love poetry during the Safavid era, Persian historian Asan Yarshader notes, as a rule, the beloved is not a woman, but a young man. In the early centuries of Islam, the raids into Central Asia produced many young slaves. Slaves were also bought or received as gifts. They were made to serve as pages at court or in the households of the affluent, or as soldiers and bodyguards. Young men, slaves or not, also, served wine at banquets and receptions, and the more gifted among them could play music and maintain a cultivated conversation. It was love toward young pages, soldiers, or novices in trades and professions which was the subject of lyrical introductions to panegyrics from the beginning of Persian poetry, and of the Ghazal. During the same Safavid era, many subjects of the Iranian Safavids were patrons of Persian poetry, such as Timuraz I of Kakheti. In the didactic genre one can mention Sinai's Hadakat ul Hakika Garden of Truth as well as Nizami's Mikzan ul Azhar Treasury of Secrets. Some of Attar's works also belong to this genre as do the major works of Rumi, although some tend to classify these in the lyrical type due to their mystical and emotional qualities. In addition, some tend to group Nasser Khosrau's works in this style as well, however true gems of this genre are two books by Sadi, a heavyweight of Persian literature, the Bustan and the Gulistan. After the 15th century, the Indian style of Persian poetry sometimes also called Isfahani or Safavi styles took over. This style has its roots in the Timurid era and produced the likes of Amir Khosrau Diwali, and Bainand Lal Goya. Prose writings The most significant prose writings of this era are Nizami Arudi Samarkandi's Shahar Makala, as well as Zahiruddin Nasser Muhammad Alfi's anecdote compendium Jawami ul Hikayat. Shams al Moali Abol Hassan Gabuz ibn Wujmigar's famous work, The Kabbas Nama, a mirror for princes, is a highly esteemed Bell's Letra work of Persian literature. Also highly regarded as Siyasatnama, by Nizam al-Mulk, a famous Persian vizier. Kelala va Demne, translated from Indian folk tales, can also be mentioned in this category. It is seen as a collection of adages in Persian literary studies and thus does not convey folkloric notions. <laughs> Biographies, hagiographies, and historical works 
Among the major historical and biographical works in classical Persian, one can mention Abalfazl Bihagi's famous Tariq i Bayhaki, Lubab ul Albab of Zahiruddin Nasser Muhammad Aufi, which has been regarded as a reliable chronological source by many experts, as well as Ata Malik Javaini's famous Tariq i Jahangushe i Juvaini, which spans the Mongolid and Ilkhanid era of Iran. Atars Tazkarat ol Aulia, Biographies of the Saints is also a detailed account of Sufi mystics, which is referenced by many subsequent authors and considered a significant work in mystical hagiography. <inaudible> <inaudible> literary criticism The oldest surviving work of Persian literary criticism after the Islamic conquest of Persia is Mukadame ye Shaname ye Abu Mansuri, which was written during the Samanid period. The work deals with the myths and legends of Shahnameh and is considered the oldest surviving example of Persian prose. It also shows an attempt by the authors to evaluate literary works critically. <laughs> <laughs> Storytelling 1001 Nights Persian, Zer w -ik is a medieval folk tale collection which tells the story of Shahrazad Persian, Shirzad Sarzad, a Sassanid queen who must relate a series of stories to her malevolent husband, King Shariar Persian, Shriar Sarayar, to delay her execution. The stories are told over a period of 1001 nights, and every night she ends the story with a suspenseful situation, forcing the king to keep her alive for another day. The individual stories were created over several centuries, by many people from a number of different lands. The nucleus of the collection is formed by a Pahlavi Sassanid Persian book called Hazar Afsana Persian, Zer Afsan Thousand Myths, a collection of ancient Indian and Persian folktales. During the reign of the Abbasid Caliph Harun al-Rashid in the 8th century, Baghdad had become an important cosmopolitan city. Merchants from Persia, China, India, Africa, and Europe were all found in Baghdad. During this time, many of the stories that were originally folk stories are thought to have been collected orally over many years and later compiled into a single book. The compiler and 9th century translator into Arabic is reputedly the storyteller Abu Abd Allah Muhammad el Ghashigar. The frame story of Sharzad seems to have been added in the 14th century. Dictionaries The biggest Persian dictionary is Dekoda Dictionary 16 volumes by Ali Akbar Dekoda. It is the largest comprehensive Persian dictionary ever published, comprising 16 volumes more than 27,000 pages. It is published by the Tehran University Press UTP under the supervision of the Dekoda Dictionary Institute. It traces the historical development of the Persian language, providing a comprehensive resource to scholars and academic researchers, as well as describing usage in its many variations throughout the world. He names 200 Persian lexicographical works in his dictionary, the earliest, Farhang Ioim Frung Awim and Farhang I Manaktai, Frung Naktai from the late Sassanid era. The most widely used Persian lexicons in the Middle Ages were those of Abu Haf Sodi Frung Abwef's SGHD and Asadi Tusi, Frung LGHTFRs written in 1092. Also highly regarded in the contemporary Persian literature lexical corpus are the works of Dr. Muhammad Moin. The first volume of Moin Dictionary was published in 1963. In 1645, Christian Ravius completed a Persian Latin dictionary, printed at Leiden. This was followed by J. Richardson's two-volume Oxford edition 1777 and Gladwin Malda's Persian-English dictionaries, Sharif and S. Peter's Persian-Russian dictionary 1869, and 30 other Persian lexicographical translations through the 1950s. Currently English-Persian dictionaries of Manocher Aryanpur and Soleiman Hayam are widely used in Iran. <laughs> Persian proverbs. Topic. The influence of Persian literature on world literature Topic. Sufi literature William Shakespeare referred to Iran as the ''land of the Sophie''. Some of Persia's best beloved medieval poets were Sufis, and their poetry was, and is, widely read by Sufis from Morocco to Indonesia. Rumi Malana, in particular is renowned both as a poet and as the founder of a widespread Sufi order. 
The themes and styles of this devotional poetry have been widely imitated by many Sufi poets. See also the article on Sufi poetry. Many notable texts in Persian mystic literature are not poems, yet highly read and regarded. Among those are Kimiya Yi Saadat, Azrar al Tahid, and Kash ul Majub. Georgian literature Starting from the early 16th century, Persian traditions had a large impact on Georgian ruling elites, which in turn resulted in Persian influence on Georgian art, architecture and literature. This cultural influence lasted until the arrival of the Russians, Jamshidshish. Junashvili remarks on the connection of Georgian culture with that of the Persian literary work Shahnameh. The names of many Sa Nama heroes, such as Rastam I, The Mine, Sam I, or Zal I, are found in 11th and 12th century Georgian literature. They are indirect evidence for an old Georgian translation of the Sa Nama that is no longer extant. The Sa Nama was translated, not only to satisfy the literary and aesthetic needs of readers and listeners, but also to inspire the young with the spirit of heroism and Georgian patriotism. Georgian ideology, customs, and worldview often informed these translations because they were oriented toward Georgian poetic culture. Conversely, Georgians consider these translations works of their native literature. Georgian versions of the Sa Nama are quite popular, and the stories of Rostam and Sorab, or Bijan and Maniza became part of Georgian folklore. Farman Farmayan in the Journal of Persianate Studies Distinguished scholars of Persian such as G. Vicaria and Todua are well aware that the inspiration derived from the Persian classics of the 9th to the 12th centuries produced a cultural synthesis which saw, in the earliest stages of written secular literature in Georgia, the resumption of literary contacts with Iran, much stronger than before G. Vicaria, 2001, p. 481. Ferdowsi's Shahnama was a never-ending source of inspiration, not only for high literature, but for folklore as well. Almost every page of Georgian literary works and chronicles contains names of Iranian heroes borrowed from the Shahnama Ibid. Ferdowsi, together with Nizami, may have left the most enduring imprint on Georgian literature. <laughs> Asia Minor Despite that Asia Minor or Anatolia had been ruled various times prior to the Middle Ages by various Persian-speaking dynasties originating in Iran, the language lost its traditional foothold there with the demise of the Sasanian Empire. Centuries later however, the practice and usage in the region would be strongly revived. A branch of the Seljuks, the Sultanate of Rum, took Persian language, art and letters to Anatolia. They adopted Persian language as the official language of the empire. The Ottomans, which can roughly, be seen as their eventual successors, took this tradition over. Persian was the official court language of the empire, and for some time, the official language of the empire. The educated and noble class of the Ottoman Empire all spoke Persian, such as Sultan Selim I, despite being Safavid Iran's arch-rival and a staunch opposer of Shia Islam. It was a major literary language in the empire. Some of the noted earlier Persian literature works during the Ottoman rule are Idris Bidlizi's Hasht Bihisht, which begun in 1502 and covered the reign of the first eight Ottoman rulers, and the Salim Nama, a glorification of Selim I. After a period of several centuries, Ottoman Turkish which was highly Persianized itself had developed towards a fully accepted language of literature, which was even able to satisfy the demands of a scientific presentation. However, the number of Persian and Arabic loanwords contained in those works increased at times up to 88%. The Ottomans produced thousands of Persian literary works throughout their century-long lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> Areas once under Ghaznavid or Mughal rule <laughs> <laughs> South Asia With the emergence of the Ghaznavids and their successors such as the Ghurids, Timurids and Mughal Empire, Persian culture and its literature gradually moved into South Asia too. In general, from its earliest days, Persian literature and language was imported into the subcontinent by culturally Persianized Turkic and Afghan dynasties. Persian became the language of the nobility, literary circles, and the royal Mughal courts for hundreds of years. In the early 19th century, Hindustani replaced it. Under the Mughal Empire of India during the 16th century, the official language of India became Persian. 
Only in 1832 did the British Army force the South Asia to begin conducting business in English. Clausen, p. 6. Persian poetry in fact flourished in these regions while post Safavid Iranian literature stagnated. Dekoda and other scholars of the 20th century, for example, largely based their works on the detailed lexicography produced in India, using compilations such as Ghazi Khan Badr Muhammad Delavi's Adat al Fudhala, Adat al Fdala Ibrahim Gavamad and Fargi's Farhang i Ibrahimi, Frung Abraham i, and particularly Muhammad Padshah's Farhang i Anandraj. Frung Anandraj. Western literature Persian literature was little known in the West before the 18–19 th century. It became much better known following the publication of several translations from the works of late medieval Persian poets, and it inspired works by various Western poets and writers. <laughs> <laughs> German literature in 1819, Goethe published his West Ostlicher Divan, a collection of lyric poems inspired by a German translation of Hafiz The German essayist and philosopher Nietzsche was the author of the book Thus Spoke Zarathustra referring to the ancient Persian prophet Zoroaster c. 1700 BCE. English literature A selection from Ferdowsi's Shahnameh was published in 1832 by James Atkinson, a physician employed by the British East India Company. A portion of this abridgment was later versified by the British poet Matthew Arnold in his 1853 Rustam and Sorab. The American poet Ralph Waldo Emerson was another admirer of Persian poetry. He published several essays in 1876 that discuss Persian poetry, letters and social aims, from the Persian of Hafiz, and Ghassel. Perhaps the most popular Persian poet of the 19th and early 20th centuries was Omar Khayyam 1048-1123, whose Rubaiyat was freely translated by Edward Fitzgerald in 1859. Khayyam is esteemed more as a scientist than a poet in his native Persia, but in Fitzgerald's rendering, he became one of the most quoted poets in English. Khayyam's line, "'A loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and thou' is known to many who could not say who wrote it, or where The Persian poet and mystic Rumi 1207 known as Malana in Iran, Afghanistan and Tajikistan, and as Mevlana in Turkey, has attracted a large following in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Popularizing translations by Coleman Barks have presented Rumi as a New Age sage. There are also a number of more literary translations by scholars such as A. J. Arbery. The classical poets Hafiz, Sidi, Khayyam, Rumi, Nizami and Ferdowsi are now widely known in English and can be read in various translations. Other works of Persian literature are untranslated and little known. <inaudible> <inaudible> Swedish literature during the last century, numerous works of classical Persian literature have been translated into Swedish by Baron Erik Hermelin. He translated works by, among others, Farid al-Din Attar, Rumi, Ferdowsi, Omar Khayyam, Saadi and Sanai. Influenced by the writings of the Swedish mystic Emanuel Swedenborg, he was especially attracted to the religious or Sufi aspects of classical Persian poetry. His translations have had a great impact on numerous modern Swedish writers, among them Carl Wenberg, Willie Kirkland and Gunnar Ekeloff. More recently classical authors such as Hafez, Rumi, Eriki and Nizami Aruzi has been rendered into Swedish by the Iranist A.S.H.K. Dahlin, who has published several essays on the development of Persian literature. Excerpts from Ferdasi's Shahnama has also been translated into Swedish prose by Namdur Nasser and Anya Malmberg. Topic. Italian literature During the last century, numerous works of classical Persian literature have been translated into Italian by Alessandro Bassani Nizami, Rumi, Iqbal, Khayyam, Carlo Sacconi Attar, Sanai, Hafiz, Nasir i Kusra, Nizami, Ahmad Ghazali, Ansari of Herat, Angelo Pimontes Amir Kusra Divali, Pio Filippani Ronconi Nasir i Kusra, Sadi, Riccardo Zippoli Baidil, Maurizio Pistoso Nizam al-Molk, Giorgio Vercellin Nizami 
Sami, Aruzi, Giovanni Maria Derme, Ubaid Zakani, Hafiz, Sergio Foti, Surawardi, Rumi, Jamie, Rita Bargili, Sadi, Faruqi, Manacheri, Unsuri, Nahid Norozi, Sorab Saperi, Kwaju of Kerman, Ahmad Shamlu, Fayeza Mardani, Fora Farouk Zad, Abbas Kiarastami. A complete translation of Ferdazi's Shah Nama was made by Italo Pizzi in the 19th century. Topic. Contemporary Persian literature Topic. History In the 19th century, Persian literature experienced dramatic change and entered a new era. The beginning of this change was exemplified by an incident in the mid-19th century at the court of Nasruddin Shah, when the reform-minded Prime Minister, Amir Kabir, chastised the poet Habibullah Khani for lying in a panegyric qasada written in Kabir's honor. Kabir saw poetry in general and the type of poetry that had developed during the Qajar period as detrimental to progress and modernization in Iranian society, which he believed was in dire need of change. Such concerns were also expressed by others such as Fath Ali Akinzada, Mirza Aqa Khan Kermani, and Mirza Malcolm Khan. Khan also addressed a need for a change in Persian poetry in literary terms as well, always linking it to social concerns. The new Persian literary movement cannot be understood without an understanding of the intellectual movements among Iranian philosophical circles. Given the social and political climate of Persia Iran in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, which led to the Persian Constitutional Revolution of 1906–1911, the idea that change in poetry was necessary became widespread. Many argued that Persian poetry should reflect the realities of a country in transition. This idea was propagated by notable literary figures such as Ali Akbar Dekoda and Abulkasim Arif, who challenged the traditional system of Persian poetry in terms of introducing new content and experimentation with rhetoric, lexico-semantics, and structure. Dekoda, for instance, used a lesser-known traditional form, the Mosamat, to elegize the execution of a revolutionary journalist. Arif employed the Ghazal, the most central genre within the lyrical tradition p. 88, to write his payam e azadi message of freedom. Some researchers argue that the notion of socio-political ramifications of aesthetic changes led to the idea of poets as social leaders trying the limits and possibilities of social change. An important movement in modern Persian literature centered on the question of modernization and westernization and whether these terms are synonymous when describing the evolution of Iranian society. It can be argued that almost all advocates of modernism in Persian literature, from Akinzada, Kermani, and Malcolm Khan to Dekoda, Arif, Bihar, and Taki Rafat, were inspired by developments and changes that had occurred in Western, particularly European, literatures. Such inspirations did not mean blindly copying Western models but, rather, adapting aspects of Western literature and changing them to fit the needs of Iranian culture. Following the pioneering works of Ahmad Kasravi, Sadiq Hedayat, Mashfek Kazemi and many others, the Iranian wave of comparative literature and literary criticism reached a symbolic crest with the emergence of Abdalhasein Zarinkub, Sharak Meskub, Haushang Golshari and Ibrahim Golistan. In Afghanistan Persian literature in Afghanistan has also experienced a dramatic change during the last century. At the beginning of the 20th century, Afghanistan was confronted with economic and social change, which sparked a new approach to literature. In 1911, Mahmoud Tarzi, who came back to Afghanistan after years of exile in Turkey and was influential in government circles, started a fortnightly publication named Sarajul Akbar. Saraj was not the first such publication in the country, but in the field of journalism and literature it launched a new period of change and modernization. Saraj not only played an important role in journalism, it also gave new life to literature as a whole and opened the way for poetry to explore new avenues of expression through which personal thoughts took on a more social color. In 1930 after months of cultural stagnation, a group of writers founded the Herat Literary Circle. A year later, another group calling itself the Kabul Literary Circle was founded in the capital. Both groups published regular magazines dedicated to culture and Persian literature. 
Both, especially the Kabul publication, had little success in becoming venues for modern Persian poetry and writing. In time, the Kabul publication turned into a stronghold for traditional writers and poets, and modernism in Dari literature was pushed to the fringes of social and cultural life. Three of the most prominent classical poets in Afghanistan at the time were Kari Abdullah, Abdul Haq Baitab and Khalil Ullah Khalili. The first two received the honorary title Malek ul Shora King of Poets. Khalili, the third and youngest, was drawn toward the Khorasan style of poetry instead of the usual Hindi style. He was also interested in modern poetry and wrote a few poems in a more modern style with new aspects of thought and meaning. In 1318, ah, after two poems by Nima Yushij titled, Garab and Gonus were published, Khalili wrote a poem under the name, Sorud Kuistan, or The Song of the Mountain, in the same rhyming pattern as Nima and sent it to the Kabul Literary Circle. The traditionalists in Kabul refused to publish it because it was not written in the traditional rhyme. They criticized Khalili for modernizing his style. Very gradually new styles found their way into literature and literary circles despite the efforts of traditionalists. The first book of new poems was published in the year 1957 1336 AH, and in 1962 1341 AH, a collection of modern Persian Dari poetry was published in Kabul. The first group to write poems in the new style consisted of Mahmud Farani, Berg Shafi'i, Soleiman Lake, Suhil, Ayana and a few others. Later, Basif Bakhtari, Asadullah Habib and Latif Nazemi, and others joined the group. Each had his own share in modernizing Persian poetry in Afghanistan. Other notable figures include Layla Sarahat Rashani, Sayed Elan Bihar and Parwan Pazwak. Poets like Mayakovsky, Yace 9 and Lahouti an Iranian poet living in exile in Russia exerted a special influence on the Persian poets in Afghanistan. The influence of Iranians e Faroqi Yazdi and Ahmad Shamlu on the newly established Afghan prose and poetry, especially in the second half of the 20th century, must also be taken into consideration. Prominent writers from Afghanistan like Asef Sultanzadeh, Reza Ibrahimi, Amene Mohammadi, and Abbas Jafari grew up in Iran and were influenced by Iranian writers and teachers. In Tajikistan The new poetry in Tajikistan is mostly concerned with the way of life of people and is revolutionary. From the 1950s until the advent of new poetry in France, Asia and Latin America, the impact of the modernization drive was strong. In the 1960s, modern Iranian poetry and that of Muhammad Iqbal Lahori made a profound impression in Tajik poetry. This period is probably the richest and most prolific period for the development of themes and forms in Persian poetry in Tajikistan. Some Tajik poets were mere imitators, and one can easily see the traits of foreign poets in their work. Only two or three poets were able to digest the foreign poetry and compose original poetry. In Tajikistan, the format and pictorial aspects of short stories and novels were taken from Russian and other European literature. Some of Tajikistan's prominent names in Persian literature are Golroxer Safi Eva, Momin Gena'a, Farzaneh Kojandi and Lakeshir Ali. Topic. Play Among the best-known playwrights are Baram Bezai, Akbar Radi Golam Hossein Saadi Esmail Khalij Ali Nasirian Mirza Aqa Tabrizi Bijan Mofid Topic. Novel Well-known novelists include Muhammad Ali Jamalzadeh Sadiq Hedayat Sadiq Chubak Golam Hossein Saidi Ahmad Mahmud Jalal Ali Ahmad Simon Dineshvar Bozer Galavi Ibrahim Golistan Baman Sholavar Mahmud Dolatabadi Baram Sadagi Ghazale Alazada Baman Forsi Haushang Golshari Reza Baraheni Abbas Marufi Reza Ghasemi Zoya Prasad Hossein Rajabian Shariar Mandanipur Abutorab Khosravi Reza Topic. 
Topic: Satire. Dakota. Araj Mirza. Kiyomars Sabari Fumani. Obaid Zakani. Ibrahim Nabavi. Hadi Korsandi. Bibi Katuna Starabadi. Javad Al Azada. Emran Salahi. Topic. Literary criticism Pioneers of Persian literary criticism in 19th century include Mirza Fath Ali Akinzaid, Mirza Malcolm Khan, Mirza Abd al Rahim Talibov, and Zain al Abedin Marag. I. Prominent 20th century critics include Jamshid Benham, Alame Dekoda, Badiazman Foruzanfar. Muhammad Taki Bihar, Jalal Homei, Muhammad Moin, Saeed Nafisi, Parviz Natel Kanlari, Sadiq Hedayat, Ahmad Kasravi, Abdal Hussain Zarinkub, Sharak Meskub. Saeed Nafisi analyzed and edited several critical works. He is well known for his works on Rudaki and Sufi literature. Parviz Natel Kanlari and Golam Hossein Yusufa, who belonged to Nafisi's generation, were also involved in modern literature and critical writings. Natel Kanlari is distinguished by the simplicity of his style. He did not follow the traditionalists, nor did he advocate the new. Instead, his approach accommodated the entire spectrum of creativity and expression in Persian literature. Another critic, Ahmad Kasravi, an experienced authority on literature, attacked the writers and poets whose work served despotism. Contemporary Persian literary criticism reached its maturity after Sadiq Hedayat, Ibrahim Golistan, Haushang Golshari, Abdul Hussein Zarinkub, and Sharak Meskub. Among these figures, Zarinkub held academic positions and had a reputation not only among the intelligentsia but also in academia. Besides his significant contribution to the maturity of Persian language and literature, Zarinkub boosted comparative literature and Persian literary criticism. Zarinkub's sur e ne is a critical and comparative analysis of Rumi's Masnavi. In turn, Sharak Meskub worked on Ferdowsi's Shahnameh, using the principles of modern literary criticism. Muhammad Taghi Bihar's main contribution to this field is his book called Sabk Shanasi Stylistics. It is a pioneering work on the practice of Persian literary historiography and the emergence and development of Persian literature as a distinct institution in the early part of the 20th century. It contends that the exemplary status of Sabk Shinasi rests on the recognition of its disciplinary or institutional achievements. It further contends that, rather than a text on Persian stylistics, Sabk Shinasi is a vast history of Persian literary prose, and, as such, is a significant intervention in Persian literary historiography. Jalal Homa'e, Badiazaman Foruzanfar, and his student, Muhammad Reza Shafi'i Kadkani, are other notable figures who have edited a number of prominent literary works. Critical analysis of Jamie's works has been carried out by Allah Khan Afzazad. His classic book won the prestigious award of Iran's year best book in the year 2000. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Persian short stories. Historically, the modern Persian short story has undergone three stages of development: a formative period, a period of consolidation and growth, and a period of diversity. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Period of diversity. In this period, the influence of the Western literature on the Iranian writers and authors is obvious. The new and modern approaches to writing is introduced and several genres have developed specially in the field of short story. The most popular trends are toward postmodern methods and speculative fiction. Topic. Poetry Notable Persian poets, modern and classical, include Mehdi Akhavan Sales, Simon Bebahani, Farooq Farooqzad, Muhammad Zohari, Bijan Jalali, Mina Asadi, Siavash Kazrai, Faridun Mashari, Nader Naderpur, Saurabh Sapari, Muhammad Reza Shafi'i Kadkani, Ahmad Shamlu, Nima Yushij, Haushang Ebtahaj, Mirzadeh Eshki, classical, Muhammad Taghi Bihar, classical, Arif Ghazvini, classical, Parvin Itasami, classical, and Sharair, classical. Topic. Classical Persian poetry in modern times 
A few notable classical poets have arisen since the 19th century, among whom Muhammad Taghi Bihar and Parvin Itasami have been most celebrated. Muhammad Taghi Bihar had the title, ''King of Poets'' and had a significant role in the emergence and development of Persian literature as a distinct institution in the early part of the 20th century. The theme of his poems was the social and political situation of Iran. Parvin Itasami may be called the greatest Persian woman poet writing in the classical style. One of her remarkable series, called Mast V.A. Hoshiar the Drunk and the Sober, won admiration from many of those involved in romantic poetry. Modern Persian poetry Nima Yushij is considered the father of modern Persian poetry, introducing many techniques and forms to differentiate the modern from the old. Nevertheless, the credit for popularizing this new literary form within a country and culture solidly based on a thousand years of classical poetry goes to his few disciples such as Ahmad Shamlu, who adopted Nima's methods and tried new techniques of modern poetry. The transformation brought about by Nima Yushij, who freed Persian poetry from the fetters of prosodic measures, was a turning point in a long literary tradition. It broadened the perception and thinking of the poets that came after him. Nima offered a different understanding of the principles of classical poetry. His artistry was not confined to removing the need for a fixed-length hemistic and dispensing with the tradition of rhyming but focused on a broader structure and function based on a contemporary understanding of human and social existence. His aim in renovating poetry was to commit it to a natural identity and to achieve a modern discipline in the mind and linguistic performance of the poet. Nima held that the formal technique dominating classical poetry interfered with its vitality, vigor, and progress. Although he accepted some of its aesthetic properties and extended them in his poetry, he never ceased to widen his poetic experience by emphasizing the natural order of this art. What Nima Yushij founded in contemporary poetry, his successor Ahmad Shamlu continued. The Sepid poem which translates to white poem, which draws its sources from this poet, avoided the compulsory rules which had entered the Nimai school of poetry and adopted a freer structure. This allowed a more direct relationship between the poet and his or her emotional roots. In previous poetry, the qualities of the poet's vision as well as the span of the subject could only be expressed in general terms and were subsumed by the formal limitations imposed on poetic expression. Nima's poetry transgressed these limitations. It relied on the natural function inherent within poetry itself to portray the poet's solidarity with life and the wide world surrounding him or her in specific and unambiguous details and scenes. Sepid poetry continues the poetic vision as Nima expressed it and avoids the contrived rules imposed on its creation. However, its most distinct difference with Nima poetry is to move away from the rhythms it employed. Nima Yushij paid attention to an overall harmonious rhyming and created many experimental examples to achieve this end. Ahmad Shamlu discovered the inner characteristics of poetry and its manifestation in the literary creations of classical masters as well as the Nima experience. He offered an individual approach. By distancing himself from the obligations imposed by older poetry and some of the limitations that had entered the Nimai poem, he recognized the role of prose and music hidden in the language. In the structure of sepid poetry, in contrast to the prosodic and Nimai rules, the poem is written in more natural words and incorporates a prose-like process without losing its poetic distinction. Sepid poetry is a developing branch of Nimai poetry built upon Nima Yushij's innovations. Nima thought that any change in the construction and the tools of a poet's expression is conditional on his, her knowledge of the world and a revolutionized outlook. Sepid poetry could not take root outside this teaching and its application. According to Simon Bebahani, Sepid poetry did not receive general acceptance before Bijan Jalali's works. He is considered the founder of Sepid poetry according to Bebahani. Bebahani herself used the char para style of Nima, and subsequently turned to Ghazal, a free-flowing poetry style similar to the Western sonnet. Simon Bebahani contributed to a historic development in the form of the Ghazal, as she added theatrical subjects, and daily events and conversations into her poetry. She has expanded the range of traditional Persian verse forms and produced some of the most significant works of Persian literature in the 20th century. A reluctant follower of Nima Yushij, Mehdi Akhavan Sales published his organ 1951 to support contentions against Nima Yushij's groundbreaking endeavors. 
In Persian poetry, Mehdi Akhavan Sales has established a bridge between the Khorasani and Nima schools. The critics consider Mehdi Akhavan Sales as one of the best contemporary Persian poets. He is one of the pioneers of free verse new style poetry in Persian literature, particularly of modern style epics. It was his ambition, for a long time, to introduce a fresh style to Persian poetry. Farooq Farooqzad is important in the literary history of Iran for three reasons. First, she was among the first generation to embrace the new style of poetry, pioneered by Nima Yushij during the 1920s, which demanded that poets experiment with rhyme, imagery, and the individual voice. Second, she was the first modern Iranian woman to graphically articulate private sexual landscapes from a woman's perspective. Finally, she transcended her own literary role and experimented with acting, painting, and documentary film making. Faridun Mashari is best known as conciliator of classical Persian poetry with the new poetry initiated by Nima Yushij. One of the major contributions of Mashari's poetry, according to some observers, is the broadening of the social and geographical scope of modern Persian literature. A poet of the last generation before the Islamic Revolution worthy of mention is Muhammad Reza Shafi'i Kadkani. M. Sarish. Though he is from Khorasan and sways between allegiance to Nima Yushij and Akhavan Salas, in his poetry he shows the influences of Hafiz and Molavi. He uses simple, lyrical language and is mostly inspired by the political atmosphere. He is the most successful of those poets who in the past four decades have tried hard to find a synthesis between the two models of Ahmad Shamlu and Nima Yushij. In the 21st century, a new generation of Iranian poets continues to work in the new poetry style and now attracts an international audience thanks to efforts to translate their works. Editions Bruno Ducey published a selection of 48 poems by Garis Abdalmalekian entitled Our Fists Under the Table 2012, translated into French by Farida Rava. Other notable names are poet and publisher Babak Abazari (1984–2015), who died under mysterious circumstances in January 2015, and emerging young poet Malad Khanrazai. Topic: <laughs> Persian Literature Awards. Sadej Hedayat Award, National Ferdowsi Prize, Haushang Golshari Award, Bijan Jalali Award. Iran's Annual Book Prize Martyr Avini Literary Award Mergan Adab Prize Parvin Edasami Award Yalda Literary Award Isfahan Literary Award Persian Speculative Art and Literature Award Jalal Al-e Ahmad Literary Awards Golden Pen Awards Lois Roth Persian Translation Prize Jala Esfahani Poetry Award Topic. Authors and poets Topic. See also Academy of Persian Language and Literature Dewan poetry includes description of symbols Takalis pen name Topic. Notes and references Topic. Sources Farman Farmayan, Fatima Sotovar. Arjormand, Said Amir, ed. Georgia and Iran Three Millennia of Cultural Relations and Overview. Journal of Persianit Studies. Brill, 2. 1. doi 10.1163.1874716.09 x 4454644. Topic. Further reading Abd al Hussein Zarin Cub. Du Karn Sukhat, Sargas, Ashti Havadis, Vaawz, I Tariqi Dar Du Karn I Aval I Islam. Two Centuries of Silence. Tiran, Sukhan. OCLC 46632917. ISBN 964 5983 6. Aryanpur, Manuchair. A History of Persian Literature. Tehran, Kayan Press, 1973 Chopra, R.M., Eminent Poetesses of Persian, Iran Society, Kolkata, 2010. Chopra, R.M., The Rise Growth and Decline of Indo-Persian Literature, 2012, published by Iran Culture House, New Delhi and Iran Society, Kolkata. 
Revised edition published in 2013. Zellum, Edward. Zarbal Masala, 151 Afghan Dari Proverbs. Charleston, Create Space, 2012. Clausen, Patrick. Eternal Iran. Macmillan, 2005. ISBN 1-4039-6276-6. Brown, E. G. Literary History of Persia 1998. ISBN 0-7007-0406-X. Brown, Edward G. Islamic Medicine, 2002. ISBN 81-87570-19-9 Ripka, Jan, History of Iranian Literature. Rydell Publishing Company, 1968. OCLC 460598. ISBN 90-277-0143-1. Schimmel, Anne-Marie A Two-Colored Brocade, The Imagery of Persian Poetry. University of North Carolina Press, USA. ISBN 1469616317. Tiku, G. L. 1971. Persian Poetry in Kashmir, 1971. ISBN 0-520-09312-7 Walker, Benjamin. Persian Pageant, A Cultural History of Iran. Calcutta, Arya Press, 1950. Zellum, Edward. Afghan Proverbs Illustrated. Charleston, Create Space, 2012. Chopra, R. M., Great Poets of Classical Persian, 2014, Sparrow Publication, Kolkata, ISBN 978-81-89140-99-1. External links National Committee for the Expansion of the Persian Language and Literature Shrey Jistrish Zaban W. Adbiat Farsi The Packard Humanities Institute, Persian Literature in Translation Currently Down Latest Archived Version Persian Literature at Encyclopedia Britannica Persian Literature and Poetry at Parstimes.com